Varmt välkomna till dagens föreläsning av professor Pierre Agostini. Jag heter Erik Lötstedt och kommer att vara konferensiert idag. Jag är själv forskare inom molekyldynamik i starka laserfält. Så jag ser verkligen fram emot att få höra professor Agostinis föreläsning. Okay, thank you very much for joining us uh, on uh, today's occasion of the special lecture by Professor Pierre Agostini, uh, which is organized by the uh, Institute for uh, Attosecond Laser Facility. Um, and uh, I'm Eric Lutstedt, and I will be the host today. I come from Sweden, and I have been doing research in Japan since 2009. Uh, and I have myself been active in, as a, in the field of strong field science for many years. So I was so excited when I learned last year that Atto Second Science was awarded the Nobel Prize. Uh, so we are very honored to be hosting this event here today. Uh, and I really look forward to hearing the lecture by Professor Agostini. Uh, so we will start by listening to the world premiere of the theme music of Alpha. And Alpha is the abbreviation of the attosecond laser um, uh, facility. Uh, and this music is newly composed by Mr. Kent Utagawa. Uh, and the piece will be performed by the pianist, Ms. Um, Mitsuko Kado, and Ms. Kado, uh, she uh, graduated from the Tokyo Gakugei University, and she is very well known for her broad repertoire, ranging from medieval Gregorian music to contemporary jazz and non-Western uh, music. And Ms. Kado will play this historical French playel piano. Uh, so, Ms. Kado, uh, please, the stage is yours.
Ms. Cado, thank you very much. That was beautiful. Um, and now I would like to introduce uh, briefly the composer of this uh, wonderful piece of music, so Mr. Kent Utagawa. So I know that Mr. Uh, Utagawa is here in the audience today, so uh, please stand up. And I, I learned that Mr. Utagawa was uh, inspired by the concept of ultra-fast atto seconds when he composed the piece. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, the next item is the, uh, um, uh, the president of the University of Tokyo, uh, Professor Teruo Fuji, uh, uh, who will now deliver a welcome speech. So President Fuji, who is the 31st president of the University of Tokyo, he has always been a strong supporter of attosecond science and also a strong supporter of the Institute for Attosecond Laser Facility, and we are very grateful for this support. Please. Well, uh, it is not so easy to, to, to make a speech after this uh, kind of very one, really wonderful music, but thank you so much, uh, Kado-san and Udagawa-san. Uh, let me begin. Professor Pierre Agostini and His Excellency Mr. Philip Seton, Ambassador of France to Japan, and Ms. Mizue Shiomi, Director General, Research Promotion Bureau, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, and Professor Louis Di Mauro uh, from Ohio State University, and a distinguished guest. Good afternoon. I am Teruo Fuji, the President of the University of Tokyo. On behalf of our entire university community, it is really a great pleasure to welcome Professor Pierre Agostini and guests from all over the world on this occasion to celebrate the awarding of the Nobel Prize in Physics in uh, 2023 on Atosecond Science. We are really greatly honored to have the presence of Nobel laureate himself here, Professor Agostini, who is a pioneer of strong field laser physics and attosecond science. Once again, I would like to convey my sincere congratulations to you for uh, your Nobel Prize in physics last year. I also would like to express my deepest respect for him, for him and other researchers around the world who have explored the new horizons of strong field and autosecond science. It is indeed wonderful to be able to see the extremely fast motions of electrons in a variety of materials around us in real time using these autosecond lasers. This uh, groundbreaking technology for the generation and application of extremely short laser pulses is deepening our understanding of nature and uh, we will uh, enrich human society in the future through uh, newly emerging research areas such as petahertz electronics, and submicron laser machining. As uh, some of you may uh, know, the University of Tokyo was established in 1877 as the first national university in Japan. U-Tokyo has been contributing much to the development of science and technology in a country for nearly 150, 150 years. One of our strengths is our focus on basic research. Our scientists 
have been working hard to unveil the mysteries of the world by conducting fundamental research in their various fields. Although it can take a long time, their discoveries in basic research provide the basis for innovation or innovative technologies themselves and lead to new industrial applications and uh, enrich our daily lives. As well as the research, we also foster talented young minds through education. One indication of our effort is the number of our alumni and researchers who have also received Nobel Prizes. And today's uh, keyword uh, in the special lecture from uh, Professor Agostini, we be at a second once again. So the, uh, I think the general uh, public might have heard this uh, at a second for the first time last fall uh, when they saw the news about this uh, Nobel Phys uh, Prize in physics. However, at Utokyo, the world uh, was already familiar to us because of our university's participation in the Atto Second Laser uh, Facility Project, uh, which is called ALPHA as abbreviation. I learned from uh, Professor Yamanouchi, the main organizer of this uh, today's event, a few years ago that an effort had been going on for more than already 15 years to establish a user facility for Alpha at our university, in which auto second laser equipment would be installed. And two years ago, to support and promote this Alpha project, Utokyo approved the establishment of a new organiza organization under the office of the president called the Institute for Auto Second Laser Facility. This project has since uh, been moving ahead successfully, and some of the budget for Alpha has been granted by the Ministry of Education, Culture, uh, Culture Sports, Science, and Technology. So thus, it was indeed timely for us that the Nobel Prize in Physics last year was awarded to the pioneers in attosecond sciences. And that convinced me that attosecond science is very important and that we made the right decision to support the Alpha project. In three years, in fact, uh, you, as I have said, you Tokyo will celebrate our 150th anniversary. Looking ahead to the next century and a half, Utokyo remains committed to actively contributing to the public good worldwide. And we will do this by helping to resolve the global challenges faced by human society through our cutting edge research. Today, I hope everyone here will learn from Professor Agostini's lecture, not only the significance of his pioneering studies in auto second science, but also the importance of exploring the frontiers of research and expanding the horizons of human knowledge. Lastly, I would like to thank Professor Agostini uh, once again uh, for coming to our university and and for uh, kindly agreeing to give a talk today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Okay, Professor Fuji, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, next, we would like to welcome uh, to the stage the Ambassador of France to Japan, His Excellency, Mr. Philippe Seton for a congratulation message. So we are very grateful to the French Embassy for supporting uh, 
the, uh, today's event. And indeed, France has been a great place to carry out research on uh, strong field and attosecond science, as evidenced by two French researchers receiving the Nobel Prize last year, so Professor Agostini and also Professor Anne Lullier. So Mr. Seton, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. President uh, Fuji, Professor Agostini, this is uh, Director General, Professors, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. First and uh, foremost, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me today for this uh, important event. It is uh, indeed a great honor to be uh, with you at the uh, University of Tokyo. And it is also, of course, a matter of pride to see a French physicist and Nobel Pr uh, Prize winner honored here today in such a distinguished institution renowned uh, for its uh, academic excellence. I am not an expert of uh, at the second science. Uh, if I said the contrary, you would probably not believe me. But what I know is, Professor, your uh, research has uh, revolutionized ultrafast laser sciences and uh, opened up new avenues in the, the study of electron dynamics, enabling scientists to observe and measure phenomena on a time scale that was uh, previously thought impossible. And you, Professor, represent a French tradition of technological and scientific excellence at the highest level, a tradition that has been upheld and developed by, by our great universities and research organizations, such as the Commissariat à l'énergie atomique et aux énergies renouvelables, where you conducted uh, your research from uh, 1967 to 2002. In France, uh, uh, Important investments were made in the recent years to support research and innovation, and should I say that the quality of uh, the French research ecosystem is uh, now reflected in the international uh, rankings, where several of our universities are progressing, like uh, the Paris-Saclay University, which is standing in the top 20, as far as I know. Scientific uh, cooperation is also essential to meet the challenges our countries are facing and uh, to stimulate innovation across uh, borders. In particular, uh, developing cooperation between our two countries in the academic and research field uh, is a priority. And uh, I would like to uh, pay tribute to the partnerships that the U-Tokyo maintains with French institutions and agencies. The French embassy naturally also tries to play its part uh, in fostering scientific uh, cooperation, in particular through uh, mobility programs and uh, various scientific initiatives involving Japanese partners. So once again, I would like to thank the uh, University of Tokyo for uh, welcoming us Today, thank you, Professor, for sharing your insights and uh, groundbreaking research. And of course, thank all of you for your very kind attention. Thank you.
Mr. Seton, thank you very much. Um, and the next person to deliver a congratulation message is Ms. Uh, Mizue Shiomi, Director General of the Research Promotion Bureau of the Ministry of uh, uh, Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. Uh, so we would like to thank uh, this uh, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology for their support over the years of our scientific activities here at the University of Tokyo and also for their strong support of the Ato Second laser facility. So Ms. Shiomi, please. Thank you for your kind introduction. I am Mizue Shiomi, Director General of Research and Promotion Bureau, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology, MEXT. First of all, I would like to express my heartfelt congratulations to Professor Pierre Agostini on receiving the Nobel Prize Physics in Physics last year. It is my great pleasure to join, to join you today on this occasion of special lecture by Professor Pierre Agostini in the presence of His Excellency Philippe Philip Seton, Ambassador of French in Japan, Professor Didier Marty Doche, Counselor for Science and Technology, Embassy of France in Japan, Dr. Katsumi Midorikawa of Riken, and Professor Louis Di Mauro of the Ohio State University. I am also pleased to learn that International Symposium on Art Seconds a second science will be held tomorrow on this campus. A second science is, important, is an important basic research field in which researchers explore fundamental origins of natural phenomena by observing processes occurring within an extremely short time scale of at seconds. Indeed, it is expected that findings and discoveries in at second science we afford a crucial basis for frontier, frontier studies in a wide range of fundamental and applied science, applied research fields. I would like to once again express my deepest request to Professor Pierre Agostini and the other researchers from Japan and abroad attending today for their ongoing effort in the development of a, a second science. Next has formulated the fundamental concept for promoting large scientific research projects, a formulation of a roadmap in order to clarify the priorities of large-scale projects at the national level. Among these, a second laser facility, which is being implemented by the, Tokyo, by the University of Tokyo, is positioned in the roadmap 2023 formulated last year as an important project that should be prioritized for promotion. We hope that this project will lead to new de developments in a second science in Japan and contribute to the advancement of academic research worldwide. Finally, I hope that today's special lecture and the symposium today will be a valuable opportunity for researchers and students abroad and at home to forge connections that will lead to future exchanges and that academic exchanges in the, in the field of at second, at second science will be further deepened on this occasion. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Shiomi, thank you very much. Uh, and this concludes part one of this event. Uh, so uh, we have to prepare, uh, make a few preparations for part two. So please be patient and wait for a few, few minutes as we set up the main uh, part number two. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for waiting. So we will now start uh, part two of this event. Um, 
And uh, I would like to, first, I would like to welcome Dr. Katsumi Midorikawa uh, uh, of Riken to say a few words. So Dr. Midorikawa, he is the di director of the Riken um, Center for Advanced Photonics, and he is one of the pioneers of attosecond science in Japan. So he is especially well known for his creation of intense attosecond pulses, which can be used as a source for spectroscopy in the time domain. So Dr. Midorikawa, please. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Eric. Uh, I'm Katsumi Midorikawa from Riken. First of all, uh, congratulations to Pierre for winning Nobel Prize in Physics. Uh, I'm very happy as a scientist working in the same field for many years. Here, I'd like to briefly introduce Pierre's achievement. In 2001, uh, Professor Pierre Agostini was the first to successfully measure the pulse duration of attosecond pulse and demonstrated that it was 250 attosecond. The method used was called rabbit in Japanese, usagi. Uh, the construction of attosecond beating by interference of two photon transition. Uh, in the ultrafast optics family, there is one rule for naming the pulse shape measurement method. That is, they must be after named after animals. The first one was a frog in Japanese, kaeru, uh, frequency resolved optical gating. After that, rule has been followed ever since. Uh, I also developed a method for measuring attosecond pulse and named it panzer, the strongest name, but not for much rabbit. <laughs> Uh, once a generation of attosecond pulse was uh, confirmed, it led to the research into the dynamics of electron in atom and molecules. The most symbolic one is ionization by light. When light is irradiated to the material, and if the photon energy is uh, greater than the ionization energy of the materials, light is absorbed, and material is ionized. Then excess energy is released as photoelectrons. This is a photoelectric effect proposed by Einstein in 1904, and it is well known that he received the Nobel Prize for it. However, for many years, the question of when is the photoelectron released or emitted could not be answered. And it was assumed to be instantaneous. Uh, the first to measure this process was done by Professor Ferenc Krauss. He received the Nobel Prize at the same time as Pierre. They irradiated neon atom with attosecond pulse and measured the time difference of 21 attosecond for photoionization of uh, 2s and 2b orbital. However, this was about twice as large as the value predicted by theory. The group of Professor Andrew she also received the Nobel Prize this time, elucidated the cause of this difference by using rabbit technique. Meanwhile, in Pierre's process leading, research process leading to the generation of attosecond pulses, he also made a significant achievement. In 1979, 
that was a discovery of a phenomena called above threshold ionization, ATI. I mentioned Einstein's photoelectric effect. That is a single one photon process. But Pierre discovered when high intensity laser is irradiated on rare gas atom, the atoms absorb much more photon than those for ionization. Naturally, the question arises, where does the excess photon energy go? In the process of searching it, Professor and Lurie observed the generation of high-order harmonic, which leads to the generation of attosecond pulses. The Nobel Prize was uh, announced in October last year. But two months before that, Nobel Symposium on Attosecond Science and Technology was held in Sweden. Pierre could not attend the symposium, but I was so impressed to see many speakers praise Pierre's discovery of ATI as a pioneer leading to attosecond pulse generation. In that sense, I believe Pierre's achievements are worthy of Nobel Prize. Uh, finally, I'm grateful to Pierre. You have allowed me to enjoy research into attosecond science for over 30 years. And uh, I'd like to conclude my remarks by asking Pierre to take care of your health and continue to lead us in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, Dr. Midori Kawa, thank you very much. Um, so then we have uh, come to the highlight of today's event, so the uh, uh, lecture by Professor Pierre Agostini. And this part of the event will be chaired by Professor Kaoru Yamanouchi, uh, who is director of the Institute for Attosecond Laser Facility. And Professor Yamanouchi, he is uh, a pioneer of the, in the application of strong and short laser pulses to the investigation of molecular dynamics. Uh, so, Professor Yamanouchi, please. Is this microphone on? All right. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your kind, kind introduction. Okay, and this is my honor and uh, to chair this part of the session. Okay, um, I am supposed to and uh, introduce and uh, Pierre's uh, CV, but and uh, I would like to introduce him a bit different way. Okay, um, last year and October the third we were holding the International Symposium on Ultra-Fast Intense Letters Science that was in Sitges, uh, in near Barcelona in Spain. And I was chairing the session for a sponsor session in which we introduced the sponsors okay, and uh, to give a short talks okay, and to introduce the product, their latest product to us. Then, um, one guy and the auditorium in the hall started shouting. Uh, Magic Lowenstein, okay. Pierre won the Nobel Prize. Oh, we uploaded, okay. And then the sponsor session was changed into the celebration session for Pierre Egostini's Nobel Prize. It was a very memorable event, okay, uh, last year. And today, and um, Pierre Agostini will introduce by himself his achievement from now, that it's not necessary for me to go into details. But the most important, maybe you need to remember the important technical words, was the ATI, out of second, okay, sorry, ab above threshold ionization, okay? And also plateau, what is a plateau? Okay, and also rabbit, that uh, uh, Professor Midorikawa mentioned just now. 
and the characterization of the second pulses, uh, very powerful techniques. After the PL talk, both of you here will be able to learn what these technical words really mean. Okay, let's welcome uh, Professor Agustin. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I'm not sure this contraption will hold for half an hour, but we'll see. So, thank you very much to uh, the Tokyo University and uh, to uh, Alpha. Uh, to having me here today and give me the, the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, uh, <laughs> talk about uh, atosigon pulses and uh, uh, yeah, I hope after all those flowers, it will not be too too dry and too difficult to understand. Okay, uh, let me start. So, uh, as you all know, about a year ago, uh, the two, 2023 Nobel Prize of Physics was awarded to uh, uh, Anne Villiers and, and Ferenc Krauss and me uh, for uh, experimental methods that generate atosecond pulse, pulses uh, of light for the study of electron dynamics in matter. Okay, uh, so during this talk, I will talk, I will try to review briefly uh, the few technical or techniques that uh, leads to atosecond pulses. Uh, of course, the high harmonic generation uh, of Anne Villiers uh, that leads to atosecond pulse train. And uh, this is an atosecond light or what? Uh, and um, uh, also of isolated atosecond pulses. Uh, then I will shift a little bit the paradigm and go to uh, XFER, which I've claimed um, a few years ago that there will uh, be uh, the, the next uh, atosecond science era. So we'll see. And eventually, I will talk uh, of a technique which is <laughs> extremely recent. Uh, uh, it appears uh, only a month ago in, in science. And uh, it's uh, basically it's an attosecond electron microscope. So uh, we'll see what this is. OK, uh, on the chapter of uh, applications. I would like to talk about uh, the first one, uh, the first historically, uh, the first application of, of atoscan pulses, and that's uh, the measurement of photoionization delays in in atoms and molecules, uh, and then uh, I will see a, a short. Yeah, uh, uh, an application to uh, the recollision physics and clocking the recollision physics. Then I will briefly talk about charge migration and uh, uh, and then eventually I will uh, give uh, something which comes from uh, also from the electron microscope paper, and that snapshots of the electron density distribution in matter, in graphene, really. Um, so, uh, 
everybody everybody knows that the the uh, that Anne Villiers discovered the harmonics in Saclay back in 1987, and uh, uh, this is uh, a schematic of her uh, setup. And uh, 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 yeah, you don't have to look at everything, but uh, the YAG at the time was a 40 picosecond YAG, very long by our standards today. And also it was not very intense and it had to be focused very tightly uh, to reach the necessary uh, intensity. Uh, so still, they, she was able to, this, to see or to report about harmonic orders up to 21. That was uh, in, in, in in terms of uh, multi-photon physics, that was quite a surprise. Uh, of course, nobody thought about Atosecond second in 1987. All right, um, in 2024, I found this picture of, uh, uh, I think, Midorikawa system, and uh, uh, it was not clear at all that Midorikawa was really here. So, but I'm glad to to uh, to show the system here. The difference is now, after 40 years of ultra fast, is uh, that the laser is 40 femtosecond, and not picosecond, and. Uh, it's so intense that a focal, a loose focusing of two meter is enough to reach the, uh, uh, the, the 100 terawatts per square centimeter. So uh, Midorikawa and co-workers were able to see orders of up to 351, say, uh, uh, which uh, compared to the 21 of uh, Anne Villiers. So that's a lot, a lot of order. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, we discovered that uh, there will be also at a second buses in, in, in Tokyo and uh, uh, I wish them good luck. All right, uh, what about uh, the physics of uh, attosecond pulses? Okay, uh, if the laser, the pump laser, is long pulse, like femtosecond, then the spectrum looks something uh, on, the, on the right box uh, with a lot of lines separated by twice the, the uh, the laser focus, the laser frequency. Uh, so uh, the question is, from the Fourier transform, I mean, from the Fourier transform, we know that in the time domain on the right, this would be, uh, I mean, this could lead to extremely short pulses. And uh, uh, the question, which was unanswered until Rabbit and uh, until 2001, was, is the face really uh, cooperating with us? Uh, we didn't know. So when Farkash and Todd published their paper in 92, suggesting that, yeah, there would be uh, very short pulses uh, from this kind of spectrum, uh, yeah, it was not uh, completely convincing at uh, the time. It was not completely convincing because, uh, yeah, uh, the phase from the single atom response looked completely random and not at all, uh, yeah, exactly, uh, not at all the, 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 the uh, the one we waited, wanted for uh, attosecond pulses. And 
Ja, uh, it took us well, quite a long time, and uh, it's only in in 2001 that the experiment uh, of uh, Paul et al. in Science uh, revealed that the phase, thanks to phase matching, then thanks to the collective emission is really, at least in a far field, it looks like uh, exactly what we want for attosecond pulses. Uh, that, the, 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 that is the reason really why uh, the high harmonic emits attosecond pulse strains. Um, yeah, it, it, if you look at the, the, the box in the right, then you see that the phase is completely random, except in, in a region where it's completely flat. And that's the uh, cutoff region of the harmonics. And this is the trick that was used by Ferenc Krauss to generate isolated attosecond pulses in, in spite of a small number of photons in that in that region. Okay, uh, that's the rabbit experiment. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure here to to cite Harm Muller uh, once more for his contribution to this uh, uh, to this uh, setup and to this result. Uh, uh, yeah, the, let's be, let me thank here the LOA ENSA for the laser and uh, uh, for their hospitality at that time. And um, sorry, I thought I had some comment there, but it's not. Uh, so. One, uh, uh, one very important element in this uh, setup is the pinhole. <laughs> the pinhole was there for a completely different reason uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, and this is because of this pinhole that we could select in the far field exactly what was needed to uh, see the uh, uh, at the second pulse straight. Oh, that's what I wanted. Uh, okay. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is that the rabbit technique is uh, for attosecond the same thing as frog is for femtosecond. So, uh, yeah. Uh, because of this, uh, this lack of uh, the pinhole, etc., we were able to find uh, the attosecond pulses in, 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 uh, uh, from that spectrum. And uh, let's see, it's the same thing to frog in the sense that we are we are working in the spectral domain and not in the time domain. All right. Uh, so if you have a short pulse instead of a long pulse to pump your harmonics, then the spectrum will turn into a continuum. And this continuum in the frequency domain uh, corresponds in the time domain to a single attosecond pulses. So that's the technique used by Ferenc Krauss in, in 2001. And their first pulse was uh, something like five femtosecond, for, for, sorry, five attosecond. So, uh, this is measured by a completely different technique that rabbit. So it's measured in the time domain, but still by photoanalyzing a target atom, 
yeah, and uh, with a uh, 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 with a strong laser pulse, and by uh, uh, measuring the uh, electron, the photoelectron momentum as a function of the delay between uh, the attosecond pulse and the uh, the, the infrared laser you get uh, what's called a striking spectrogram and uh, this uh, can yeah, convey the, uh, the, uh, uh, the duration of the attosecond pulse. So that was in 2001, just like us. And a few years later, I mean, People from uh, the Mauro group in, in uh, Milano got pulses as short as 130 attoseconds. So, yeah, a factor of five in, in a few years. And uh, it was not easy, but uh, it, was, it was done. Um, and it took, it took another decade, really, to go from 130 attosecond to the current record, which is 43 attosecond. And that's uh, extremely short, but okay. Uh, according to the people, uh, to the water group uh, who uh, got it, uh, they, the, the same that the same atom and the same uh, and the same technique could lead to even shorter pulses, and uh, they claim in the paper they say in the paper that uh, uh, it's because of the reflectivity of the mirror that was limiting the spectrum that they were limited to 43 uh, at a second. So, well, well, that's already, yeah, a few, 2000, uh, 2017, so that's already a number of years ago, and uh, uh, I, to, uh, to my knowledge, uh, nothing shorter than 43 at the second has been uh, reported. One drawback of the harmonic uh, technique is the lack of intensity due to the low efficiency of high harmonics. So uh, the attosecond pulses from XFER are shown to be orders of magnitude more intense than this uh, laser technique. So we'll see. Uh, the main uh, facilities uh, of XFER in the world are on this map, and uh, yeah, uh, the most, perhaps the most ancient and the most famous is the LTLS at Stanford. But uh, the, there is a Swiss FER now that already claims to have uh, sub, uh, fem, sub femtosecond pulses. Uh, I'm not so sure about the other one. I, I think uh, they are not yet uh, at, the, at that point. So this shows uh, a result from the LCLS uh, XFER and uh, you can see, uh, I hope you can see, uh, that yeah, the, the result of the EXF XFF here are in uh, the blue region, and all the other lasers, uh, harmonics uh, results are in the yellow region. So you can see that how much more intensity you can get from those XFER. And OK, I guess this is the reason why they, they 
claim or they state at least in, in the paper, uh, these pulses pave the way for a new era in the outer second science. Okay, uh, let me briefly talk about another technique published at the end of August in Science. And uh, it combines both sub femtosecond optical pulses and electron microscope technique. So, uh, the, the point of this uh, is that they are able to produce 200 kilo electron volt uh, electron pulses with duration less than femtosecond. So, I don't think we are ready to uh, compete with this, those 200 kilo electron volt with anything like uh, harmonics or XFL. So, basically, the 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 setup is uh, is an electron microscope. So they produce uh, first of all they produce an electron pulse, which is the standard pulse of 100 at a femtosecond, and uh, uh, it's by combining then this uh, this pulse of 100 femtosecond with uh, um, a technique which is well known in for us, which is uh, an optical gating technique. Uh, so they have a second laser there, uh, with which produces a very short uh, linearly polarized pulse. Okay, so this pulse, uh, well, by by uh, this uh, completely well-known technique, is combined to uh, the laser pulse, to the the electron pulse, and after the, the interaction between uh, the two in an aluminum grid, uh, uh, you have um, an optical gated electron pulse, which is, well, they have an estimate of uh, 625 <laughs> uh, attoseconds. So it's not really yet a measurement, but it could be uh, if we can, if we believe them. Uh, so uh, with this pulse, they've been able to to measure the electron the electron density distribution in graphene, and uh, I will show you a result uh, just after. So uh, we. Uh, we are now in 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 the in the chapter application, and I will start with the the, the first historical application, which is the photoionization delays, uh, and uh, this comes from a well known, uh, well, uh, famous uh, paper, theoretical paper by Vignard and company in 1906, uh, <coughs> which relates the rabbit phase to uh, the atosecond pulse strain phase, which is why it was uh, <coughs> why it was used in the first place. And, but it has also a small correction, which is uh, called now the photoionization delay. And this has two parts, the continuum continuum part, which is not so interesting, and uh, the Wigner time, uh, the Wigner delay, which is much more interesting because for theorists at least, <laughs> because it depends on, on the potential uh, that creates it. 
uh, I had a question once about uh, uh, the Vigdal delay. So I produced this slide, which comes from uh, the Dahlstrom et al. Uh, tutorial uh, back in 2012. So that gives the definition of uh, the Vigdal delay. The Vigdal delay, by the way, goes back uh, to the 30s, I guess, or something like that, uh, the Vigdal paper. All right, so there has been tons of, of uh, uh, publications and measurements during the last 20 years, uh, the last, at least the last 10 years, and uh, I show that a measurement from Ohio, Ohio State as an example. So it's not very easy to measure uh, the, the photoionization delay because it's a small thing compared to the uh, auto second pulse strain. So you have to do whatever is necessary, differences and th things like that to, to be able to, to measure it. Actually, this is the first time that measurement uh, of tens of attosecond law is, is done, really. I mean, before attosecond pulses, nobody could do that. In the, in the charge migration, this is another very nice example of the work done with the uh, isolated attosecond pulse by uh, uh, the Milano group. It's not too recent, but uh, uh, still, I can, I can explain um, what it is. So if you remove one electron from a big molecule at one side of the mo big molecule, for instance, uh, the NH2 uh, uh, group here, then you create a whole density in the molecule, and this whole density will sort of move around the molecule, migrate uh, during the time that follows the extraction of the first electron. And you, the, the, the technique used here is a pump probe, and the pump is the second pulse that extracts the electron, and the probe is uh, a laser pulse that doubly ionize the molecule and uh, after delay. And uh, uh, the doubly charged ion versus the delay uh, reveals uh, an oscillation, but this oscillation is too fast to be due to the nuclei motion. So it follows exactly the whole density calculations. So this is uh, uh, an excellent case of measurement of charge migration. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the, uh, Everybody remembers, I guess, uh, the big surprise in the 90s about uh, the non-sequential double ionization. This was a surprise of several orders of magnitude. And it was sort of explained by Paul Corkum in a famous paper, 93 paper, and uh, he says what's uh, written here. And uh, it talks about the electron that leaves the atom and uh, which comes back a fraction of, of, uh, um, of period later. So uh, we did the experiment at Ohio State recently at uh, uh, yeah, basically, 
the setup is a rabbit setup, except that now we have a system where we have an ion detector, so we can also detect the doubly charged ions. And uh, uh, the result is here, and it's what do you see is uh, as a function of time, uh, the doubly charged ion signal and uh, the theory and experiment, and both are in, in excellent agreement. So the paper is submitted. All right, and now I go back to uh, the electron microscope. And uh, uh, what you have here is a measurement of the electron density, snapshots of the electron density, and supposedly snapshots that last less than one femtosecond, right? Uh, 625 attosecond. And those are different snapshots. And you see the electron density uh, uh, moving around uh, in, in, in between those snapshots. Uh, I had several times, but once I had a young guy in the audience which uh, was asking, can I have a picture of an electron, please? And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not easy to have a picture of an electron. But this is probably the closest that we have at the time, uh, at this time, of, of uh, an electron picture. OK, uh, just a few ending remarks. So uh, attosecond pulses are now 22 years old, and that's a lot of attoseconds. Uh, now, the shortest pulse is 43 attoseconds, as we have seen. By comparison, the current precision in atomic clock is one second per hundred million years. And that's just 317 attosecond per second. So uh, by comparing these two numbers, we can okay, sort of wonder if the technique we use to produce attosecond pulses uh, could be used to improve the, atos the atomic uh, clock precision. And finally, the shortest time that has been measured or reported is 247 septosecond, <laughs> not attosecond, septosecond. That's 10 to minus 21 seconds. And uh, but there is no pulses that short yet. And uh, this is a time measurement which. Uh, is not uh, depending on the pulse on the pulse duration. All right, and I think I will stop here. Hi, Pierre. Thank you very much. A wonderful talk. Okay, on the auto second science and from the beginning and also to the very recent studies you introduced kindly. All right, then this floor is open for discussion or questions. I would like to accept uh, a few questions and uh, uh, any questions over there, question over there. The microphone, there, microphone. Thank you very much uh, for your nice talk. And I'm so surprised for the very recent uh, development of the attosecond microscopy. Yeah, and the, so uh, could you uh, uh, estimate the current status of the spatial resolution in a real space mm -hmm. okay. uh, for this kind of attosecond? 
my All right, j just wait, wait. Okay. And uh, the uh, uh, question was, <laughs> どういう question かというと、あのえっとアットセカンドのパルスのそのデあのえっとデュレーションえっとなんでしたっけ？えっとえっと空間分解の空,空間分解あのエレクトロンマイクロスえっと顕微鏡のあ顕微鏡のマイクロスコピーをに使えるんだけれども、そのスペーシャルレゾリューションが空間分解のがどれだけですかっていう質問で、OK、Please。Please answer. Ah, okay, I'm not exactly sure. You are, you are asking about the electron microscopy uh, yeah. experiment. And、uh, the question is.、Uh, the sp spatial resolution, the, in real space, spatial resolution. How short、oh, the does spatial, spatial resolution? resolution. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the pictures I showed. About the electron density resolution、uh, distribution is uh, is uh, in the、uh, in the reciprocal domains of 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 graph field. So、uh, you have an idea of、uh, how good it is,、uh, but、uh, I don't think we can do this kind of experiment with anything else than this <laughs> and.、Uh, Uh, yeah, even if you have a much shorter pulse,、uh, light pulse,、uh, with a harmonic duration, or even uh, with uh, uh, with XFEL, there is no way you can reach the energy of those electrons. Yeah, the so sorry. The, the question is how short is in the Angstrom, for example? Yeah. The, the,、uh, His question was on that. Yeah, they, they <laughs> quote a number, but、uh, mm. they don't have really a,、mm -hmm. a measurement there.、Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure. All、oh, right, okay.、Yeah. Thank you. Kuka Bunkai no wa, mata doko ma de ka yuko wa karanai. All right, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions?、Um, over there? Okay. So congratulations again for winning the Nobel Prize, and thank you very much for your great talk. So I learned that now the、uh, atom second science is new, I think, in uh, opening uh, due to the development of the light source technology, and、uh, I really expect uh, uh, the atom second science will be、uh, highly developed from now on too. But Uh, at the same time, I'm also very curious about the application of art second science and how art second science could、uh, be applied to industry, or how art second science can collaborate with industrial、uh, community to make new value. So, could,、uh, if you could、uh, give some comments on it. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. And、uh, in, in Japanese,、yeah. a bit, okay. And, えっと質問はあの質問はその工業的な応用とか実際の実生活にかつあの必要まあ見えに見える形でアート病のサイエンスっていうのを応用できる可能性はこれからありますか Okay, please. No, do you want to talk about that? Okay, you... <laughs>、uh, Okay, so the relation between atom second and strong field physics—that's what your question about, right? Yeah. The ap application of atom second pulses for the industrial and for、uh, example, yes, for example, industrial companies will use atom second science or technology for their values. Such possibility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we、uh, might.、Uh, okay. Yeah, please. You, you, you can respond, but because Pierre said. <laughs> no, it's okay. So、uh, yeah, that's a difficult question to answer.、Uh, for one, the radiation that comes from these high harmonics that make at the second pulses is coherent, and it's in the at least the extreme ultraviolet. So, the idea of using those type of light source for doing lithography 
is a real possibility and companies like Intel and MSL are all examining that. That's not at the seconds, it's just using the fact that you have this coherent light bulb. Um, Ferenc Krauss and his group are pursuing uh, the idea of using at the second technology for er early cancer detection. Uh, it's very speculative, but there are clinical trials going on, and that's, uh, you know, well, clearly a benefit uh, to mankind or, or the human society if, you know, early cancer detection could be developed using this type of technology. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there's more to come. Um, one of the problems with attoseconds in terms of seeing its broad impact is the fact that the technology is highly specialized. So people like me and Pierre know how to do it. But my friend in the chemistry department or my friend in the material science department don't know how to make at the second pulses. You know, the of evolution from the invention of the laser, as the laser got shorter and shorter and shorter in duration, it was always a laser. And someone commercialized it and someone could buy it and put it in their ta on their table and solve the type of science problems that they may have. At the seconds don't do that very easily. And so being established throughout the world, like here in Japan, uh, is the idea that there's gonna be specialized user facilities where people in different fields of science could come and utilize these sources and start addressing problems that need to be solved or see how well they can do it. So that's the best answer I can give you. Oh, all right, thank you very much. Um, and in Japanese, okay, may I <laughs> translate fast? Okay. えっと、あと それからソフトエクスレイリージョンである。で、そういうことを考えるとアトビオのパルスは例えば使いたいと言っても Ah, thank you very much. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, okay, behind you, the, the, over there. Yes, you. Uh, Professor Pere, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, see, I, I just want to like know your vision, like uh, is this attosecond science, is it the solution that you're looking for problems? Uh, because, like you mentioned, right, like uh, to discover, to come from a 40 femtoseconds to nearly five, uh, 40 picoseconds to five femtoseconds, it took like more than two decades. And now, like, like isolating and then measuring this at a second, it took few years. But uh, what do you like foresee, like, as a fundamental science, how it progress, especially related to at a second? And with all the facilities now going on with uh, extreme light infrastructure, which they planned, that's going on around. Um, the question is, the, something like a future direction of the auto second sciences or yeah. right, something like that? Yes. Okay. And, okay. Uh, in, in Japanese, and auto second or palace got square you in Animasta Kere, the more, so they Okay. And uh, you, can you say something on this? 
Um, uh, okay, if your choice, if your choice. <laughs> uh, let me point out at least the two applications for the future that are uh, yeah, promoted by uh, Anne Rizier and by Ferenc Krauss. And they are both application of the spectra of high harmonics, not so much of the attosecond part of them. And uh, so one was already uh, cited before, and it's uh, the early detection of cancer by Fourier transform infrared uh, spectroscopy. Uh, the other one is the application of uh, the harmonic spectrum to uh, the uh, technology of, uh, um, uh, how to call that, uh, very, uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, that's the, the situation at uh, that day. All right. Thank you very much. And the, the answer was okay. And the two, there are two different ways. One is, as Dimaro Sensei said, that the cancer detection is spectroscopy. Use Fourier transform. Use the second pulse, the broad pulse, to use it. Use the Fourier transform. Use the spectroscopy. Use it. Use it. あとはそれが i n d u s t r i a l application に近いかもしれませんけれども、コンピューターのチップスとかそういうものを使うときに、そういうあのアトセカンパーセンが使えるでしょう。そういうことをおっしゃってます。Alright, thank you very much. I think that's kind of time of all my all, all already up. Okay, and I it's a regret to close this session, but finally I would like to thank Pierre Acosta again. Thank you very much. Then Eric. Okay, thank you, Professor Agostini, for a great lecture, and uh, uh, thank you for the questions from the uh, audience. So we are coming to the almost the end of the event, um, and then uh, finally, I would like to ask Professor Luis Di Mauro to give us some closing remarks. So, Professor. Uh, Di Mauro, he's professor of physics and the Hagen Locker Chair at the Ohio State University in the United States. And he has been a leading researcher in the strong field and attosecond science for more than 30 years. And uh, he is well, known for many things, but among uh, may maybe the most famous one is the semi classical model of strong field physics and also the applications of his experiments on the applications of. X-ray attosecond pulses. Um, and he is now running a group, a uh, research group at the Ohio State University together with Professor Agostini. So Professor Di Mauro, please. Thank you. Uh, so I was asked to just give some closing remarks and I'll, I'll keep it uh, brief. Uh, I'm Lou Di Mauro uh, from Ohio State University. I am a colleague of Pierre Agostini and a friend of uh, Pierre for many years. In fact, so many years, it's best thought of in decades. So we've known each other over three decades. Uh, so um, Pierre told you about how to make at the second science, and he really started his story from the discovery of Anne Louis in uh, 1988 to the formation of at the second pulses in 2001, a span of 12 years or so. But what I'd like to impose upon you is the idea that the discovery of at the seconds even goes back further, and much further than that in terms of research. You know, 10 years or 12 years seems like a long time, uh, maybe to most of us. However, in the scientific world, it's a rather short time. Uh, and sometimes scientific discovery take many decades, and in this case, it's true. So it really started with the invention of the laser. People all of a sudden had this uh, new coherent light source. Um, 
theorists had been dreaming of such light sources, and immediately now we had, they had this tool to start exploring. And Pierre was there from the very beginning of those applications of, uh, of these intense laser sources. So one question that immediately came to mind is how much energy, if I have this coherent light source, can I deposit a lot of energy into an atom or a molecule or some material? Okay, Pierre demonstrated to you already that he was taking light from a laser that's near visible light and converted it into extreme ultraviolet light. Okay, so obviously this atom that's generating the harmonics absorbed many of those photons and put out a photon of much larger energy. So that was a basic question that, that arose in the early 60s. And lots of experiments started to go on, go on because of the invention of the laser. And people were doing a very simple experiment. They were just shining a laser on some gas, and then they were counting how many charged particles they were getting off it. And that went on for almost a decade. And a, a lot was learned there, but you still you knew that you were coupling a lot of energy into the atom or the molecule, but you didn't know how that energy was being coupled. Then along comes the Sackley group, and they did this rather simple experiment, but most insightful experiment is, instead of just counting ions, what they did is they looked at the electrons they were count making, and then said, what are the electron energies? And what they saw, what they unfolded, is this idea of uh, above threshold ionization, which has been mentioned today, which I think is uh, very nice, because it's almost that discovery of ATI by Agostini et al. at Seclay is, to me, almost as important as the formation of at the second pulses. That one experiment basically opened the Pandora box where we started to see in to the atom and what was happening with this interaction. So a lot of questions came up uh, just following Pierre's talk about, well, what are these attoseconds good for? Okay, uh, if you believe the Nobel Committee, uh, the Nobel Committee rule is that the award is given to science or technology that has stood the test of time. And it's traditional that in giving out the Nobel Prize that it's about a 20-year delay between the discovery and, and the award itself. And uh, obviously here too, it was 22 years, Pierre said. Uh, so uh, it had stood the test of time. Uh, but how about the impact? Well, let's think about Nobel Prizes in the past. Uh, I mean, they should have a benefit to society, but that benefit could be pure knowledge. So you think about the discovery of some subatomic particle that gets awarded Nobel Prizes. It's not clear what the application is, but however, it has advanced the fundamental knowledge of, uh, of humankind, okay? And then you think of the other sort of prize, the invention of the transistor, the invention of the laser, the discovery of graphene. I mean, those are very clear where they're going to have an impact to us all, okay? I would say at the seconds lies somewhere in between, okay? It still hasn't completely, well, it hasn't fulfilled its, you know, promise. But as I stated earlier, the reason for that is this technology has been in the hands of people like me, people like Pierre. Uh, we are very drawn to very fundamental questions in physics. But some biologists, you know, if they want to do an attosecond experiment, wh how, where are they going to develop this? This is going to take them 10 years to develop it. So, the proliferation of the technology into the hands of people who have problems to solve 
has been limited in this field. Okay? And finally, over the last decade, that has been recognized and, and now being funded by federal governments, both here in Japan with Alpha, in the United States by the National Science Foundation, and in Europe by uh, the European community in terms of various facilities now, user facilities that are going to be developed throughout the world that produce at the second pulses and provide certain capabilities to the broad scientific cap uh, um, community that can come in and solve their problems while people like me or people specialized like me run these light sources, okay? And you do your experiment. So I think that makes a very exciting future for at the seconds. Once it gets into the hands of a broad set of scientists. So I'm very looking forward to that. So uh, let me uh, first of all uh, thank uh, the University of Tokyo, uh, especially uh, meeting President Fuji earlier uh, for his uh, kindness of hope hosting that ver this very special event. Um, also my special thank to Professor Yamanuchi for inviting us here for this wonderful celebration. Uh, of course, we should all thank Pierre for giving us a reason to celebrate. And, and finally, I'd like to thank the financial support from uh, the University of Tokyo and the Koga uh, Foundation. And with that, I wish you all a, a good day and I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Okay, Professor DiMauro, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this is the end of today's event. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And I also would like to thank the sponsors uh, of the event to make, uh, to make, for having it made possible. Uh, thank you very much. And then finally then, let's give a big hand to all the speakers and the sponsor, and in particular then to uh, Professor Pierre Agostini. Okay, thank you very much and have a great day.